Welcome back to Beyond the Gate, a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I'm Meg. And I'm Megan. We're going to talk about Episode 3, City of Heresy. For a summary of the episode, uh, science and faith collide when the Elrics confront Father Cornello. He claims to work miracles, but the brothers suspect he's abusing a philosopher's stone to manipulate his flock. All right, and the manga the manga chapters for this episode would be chapters one and two. Yeah, uh, one thing we forgot in the last episode was uh, mentioning what chapters the the episode covers. So it was, uh, yeah, the previous episode two was a combination of parts from chapters 21, 22, and 24. They introduced it very early in the show just to kind of give you the context for the Elrics and what their goal is in the story. Probably just to speed it up because it would, it had, con- it had been revealed in, in the previous anime. Um, I do like it better in the manga because it gives you something to kind of latch onto later in the story after you already know the boys and then you find out their tragic backstory. But um it's not a bad thing from a story standpoint to introduce it early on either, though. <laughs> <laughs> if only nods and noise. <laughs> uh, they do when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're in an anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, to, to jump into the episode. Uh, we... Uh, start out with uh, Ed and Al sitting at some sort of I don't know like outdoor cafe kind of thing Mm -hmm. um they're listening to a yeah right they're listening to a a radio radio broadcast Billy about (laughs) yeah yeah basically (laughs) basically um about the sun god Leto, and it's yeah. it's a uh, it reminds me of those old broadcasts like well like I said Billy Graham or like from the 1940s where they had all those revival tents set up and then the radio broadcast um talking about Christianity but in this case uh the sun god Leto is is um more of a mythology type figure and it's we we wrote it down because we we looked it up briefly, but the sun god Leto is um, based off of the Greek goddess Leto, who is the mother of Apollo and Artemis. Apollo is the god of the sun and music and poetry and on and on and on. And Artemis is the goddess of the hunt and also the goddess of the moon. And she is not a very well-known goddess in Greek mythology, but she was a goddess of motherhood. I don't know. If- like the author actually looked up probably not the sun I god think, leo the god leo, leo in greek might mean sun it actually i think it means like wife or something oh <laughs> that's a hmm let me look it up what does the name leto mean most countries all over the world name leto with a girl name um Name meaning, name origin, the hidden one. It's called the, the name meaning says hidden one from this baby name website. That's very fitting, actually. Something interesting that the broadcast says is that the sun god Leto can bring the dead back to life. Mm. So that piques Ed's interest because as we know they have tried to do that and it had not had terrible Terrible consequences (laughs) yeah Um, (laughs) and just a little bit (laughs) oh nothing it just cost an arm and a leg nothing much yeah but um exactly but obviously, Ed is very skeptical and I think a bit nervous, too. He he does say the line, I don't like the sound of that. Um, and he and Al decide 
to go and check it out. Al, being as tall as he is, bumps into the top of the um, the stand, the little outdoor cafe, and knocks the radio down, and it totally breaks. And also, I don't think we mentioned this, and I don't know if they actually say, but they finally made it to Lior in this episode. Oh, yes, this is Lior, the, by the, the way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, it, it is Lior. They are in the city, and that's where the broadcasts are coming from. Um, and the people are totally into it. Like, they are waiting with bated breath for each of these radio broadcasts. So when Al smashes the radio on accident, obviously the shop owner is pretty distressed and everyone's kind of mad at him. Ed assures them it's okay. And Alphonse actually does the alchemy. He draws the transmutation circle on the ground with some chalk. And in like one quick movement, he's fixed the radio. And then they, the Alrics reveal that, that they're the famous um, Alric brothers and that Edward Elric is the full metal alchemist, and they of course mistake Al for the full metal alchemist. And Ed's so proud of himself, and then everybody's surrounding Al, and then they're like, What? It's the short guy? <laughs> Which provokes Ed, and Al has to hold him back. It's very cute, though, because, I mean, Ed is rampaging, and I'll just stand there like, no, big brother, don't hurt them. They didn't mean it. (laughs) He's so sweet. Yes. And um, so, brief manga note. Uh, We will meet her later, but in the manga, while they're sitting at the cafe, Ed and Al meet a girl named Rose. She uh, is at the cafe to buy what she calls offerings for the church. and we don't meet her in the the anime until we get to the actual church. But they probably had to cut this part for time. When they meet Rose, uh, in the manga, actually, her name is spelled with an accent mark over the E. So I'm kind of wondering if the pronunciation should have been different. Like, instead of saying Rose, it should have been Rosa or something. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce accent marks exactly. But we'll just uh, keep in continuity with the show. Um, there is also a brief discussion between Father Cornello and Rose um, before the Elrics meet her. And they do talk a little bit about Litoism. And in the conversation, sorry, just trying to find a page. Oh, yes. She goes to see Father Cornello from his room where he broadcasts. Um, uh, Cornello seems like a very fatherly figure at first. He he compliments Rose for being so dedicated. and Rose nervously asks when he's going to be able to and she trails off and um father canelo assures her that god has seen her good deeds but it's not yet time and rose agrees yes not yet and we don't know what she's talking about yet now that we're talking about rose we go to the to a church and we see Rose praying and can talk about oh. her voice actor. Notes. Yeah, so it's interesting. Rose's voice actor is somebody we will hear throughout uh, the whole show, just not as the same character. Rose Thomas is played by Colleen Clinkenbeard who has also voiced Akita Soma from Fruits Basket, Momo Yarosu from My Hero Academia, and Luffy in One Piece. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I do not have the, I don't have the courage to watch over 500 episodes of, of that show. Um, but yeah. I think she, it might actually be up to 1,000. Oh, my word. <laughs> anyway, Colleen also plays another character from Full Metal that we'll meet later. So be on the lookout for her. Actually, we've already met her. Oh, we kind of met her, yes. We just haven't gotten the best introduction. It was very fleeting. But she plays Riza Hawkeye, who is one of the best. And um, Rose's name is of a Latin origin, obviously referring to the flower. And Meg, what did you say that roses represent? Uh, Well, beauty and (laughs) purity and romance. Oh, yes. Romance. Three uh-huh. things three things that come to mind when I think about a rose. Yeah. Yes. Uh 
And for all you shippers out there, I think she's too old for Ed, so don't get any ideas. <laughs> yes, yes. And right, what the 2003 uh, anime may lead you to believe. Yes, yes. And, and I think um, that is kind of uh, immediately shut down oh, when definitely. Ed and enters the church and Rose gives him the uh what is she She gives him kind of a a little bit of a spiel about Litoism. um she asks if they're going to join the church in the manga and head straight up says no I'm, I'm not religious and um later he he actually admits to being agnostic even but Rose assures that if you believe in God, you can live with hope and gratitude every day. It's wonderful. And then she follows that up with, if you have faith, you'll grow taller for sure. Yeah, this scene is kind of interesting. Because, um, you know, like you mentioned, Rose asks him if you enjoy the church. And he's like, no, I'm I'm not. I'm not religious. And um, basically, he's like, I don't believe in God. And um, uh, I think he uh he asks her if if she believes that people can be brought brought back from the dead right Does um, that happen? um there might be a question about it uh oh yes he asks, do you believe that if you pray to god the dead will come back to life yeah yep and rose says yes and ed proceeds to pull out a notebook and starts Mm. reading off a list um it's the water 35 liters carbon 20 kilograms um ammonia four liters lime one and a half kilograms phosphorus 800 grams salt 250 grams salt peter 100 grams and various other trace elements and he basically says that that's the chemical makeup of a human. And you can buy all those things at a market and humans are very cheap. Yes. Which sets Rose off because, well, you know, that's that's kind of a an uppity thing to say and a very um, rude thing to say, really, to somebody who obviously believes in the sanctity of life and that uh, God created everybody. It's hard because it's the dichotomy of two characters, one who has absolute faith in something and one who, well, saying he's agnostic is kind of opening himself up to like, yeah, there are possibilities, but I rely on facts. I need something proven to me. And concepts like, you know, an afterlife and... And God, heaven, angels, demons, it's its a hard thing to wrap your head around if you don't see evidence around you. But maybe he's not looking. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> getting back to the conversation with Rose. <laughs> I got a little too deep there. <laughs> uh, no, no, you're fine. Um, and, and also, Ed is just, I don't know, I feel like he's kind of kind of a little bit of a brat in this scene because he yeah. basically says that he's god and he can you know he, he, I, he's kind of baiting her in a way yeah trying he, to get a rise out of her and, and it definitely works um mm-hmm. and but then at the end it's kind of interesting because rose is like oh so you're putting yourself on the the same level as god but then ed comes back and says and references uh a greek myth yes um icarus yeah icarus yeah about a it's a hero who flew on wings made of wax and he thought he could touch the sun but he got too close his wings melted and he came crashing back down to earth Mm. so he's kind of saying I don't know. He's in his own in his own way. He's saying, "No, I'm not on the same level as God." Or, right. You know, he, there, there's he something. Yeah, there's something missing. Yeah, like, he kind of words it in a way where he's 
seeming snarky at first was like so, in some ways scientists are gods themselves because they create new things and try to understand life and and um you know knowledge is power but at the same time like in the myth if you get too close to the sun too close to god you're gonna fall hard and he and al have they have experienced that firsthand anyway we spent a lot of time on that (laughs) yeah well that was this doesn't pull back on punches so we kind of had to yeah okay Anyway, the next the next scene is kind of a quick scene where we meet where we actually see Father Cornello for the first time. Mm-hmm. Talk about his voice actor. Yeah, so think. Father Cornello is obviously not a recurring character too much, and I actually hadn't heard of his voice actor before, but it's Andy Mullins. He has been additional voices in shows like Attack on Titan and Black Clover. So. Anyway, okay, so we meet Father Cornello, and he seems kind of sketchy. He's talking to some henchmen about the Elric brothers, and he's like, why are they here? Like, they're they're so, um, I don't know, they're, they're smart or whatever. They or, like, they're sweet. getting too close. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, oh, I don't know. They want, they want a meeting with him. And that kind of leads into the next scene where yeah. they're kind of meeting in this, this weird layer kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's totally a layer. <laughs> okay, so they're in the basement. And um, the, the like henchman, Brother Cray, Mm-mm. um kind of pulls out a gun and rose is horrified like what are you know what are you doing and um yeah he he shoots what no no sorry in in the manga in the manga but in the anime yeah in the anime they they're trapped um so what happens in the anime is they're trapped in the underground room and um Ed is being held back by two guards and oh, oh man, yes <laughs> so they're trapped in the basement and they kind of like speed things along but um basically Ed and Al are trapped Rose is very confused to what's going on Father Cornello comes out and he uh he accuses the Alrics of of being um I, I guess heretics who are going to destroy the church and whatever and um he's very manipulative He's very manipulative towards Rose because, you know, he's promised her something. And that something is that he can bring her fiance back to life. And that's this whole, that's the whole reason why she was working so hard and trying to do good deeds and and to please God and whatever, because she wanted her, her loved one back so bad. She wanted him back. And um, so by manipulating her, Father Cornello says, she she needs to take the gun and shoot the full metal alchemist. Um and <laughs> Father Cornello is referring to Alphonse at that point. Again, mistaken identity. And y- you'd think that you'd keep quiet about the real identity. Alphonse is covered in armor, so what's the gun gonna do? But no, Ed screams at the top of his lungs, it's me! <laughs> so, so um but Rose is is you can see that she really doesn't want to shoot anybody. And her hands are trembling so much. She does squeeze the trigger, but the gun jerks backwards. And our theory is that um, she didn't mean to fire, but she was so scared that her finger kind of pulled the trigger. But um, unfortunately, it does find a mark and her her shot blows Alphonse's helmet clean off. Oh, no. Alphonse, no. (laughs) But that's where I want to mention the manga because... It's a little more impactful in the manga. First of all, Rose never fires her gun, never touches a gun in the manga. But um, when they get into the basement, Brother Cray, one of the lackeys, turns, pulls the gun, and he's the one who shoots Alphonse's head off. And by this point in the manga, 
we don't know that the Elrics have committed the cardinal sin and don't know that Alphonse is just a soul in the body. So it's kind of this moment where when you're reading, you're like, holy cow, they just killed a character. Um, And obviously that's what Rose thinks. And she's outraged, but um, this is kind of step one to debunking father Cornello for her because father, because um, brother Cray says that Cornello allowed this, you know, allowed somebody to get hurt. And um, brother Cray says, this is the will of God. But of course, Alphonse is not knocked down. He grabs the gun. Everyone is shocked at an Al go ham and start, you know, bashing faces. <laughs> and that's when Rose first learns that Al is just that suit of armor. It's all you. <laughs> okay. So when the gun fails to get rid of the Alec brothers, um, Father Cornello releases a chimera um which i don't know i kind of assume that he i think they imply that he made yeah i think he says a line like the philosopher's stone can do amazing things yeah something to that effect and it's like i don't remember it has like it's like a lion but it has feathers and yeah it's uh traditionally i think chimeras are like uh lion serpent look up. yeah or rooster or whatever um it kind of reminds me of a griffin i know other chimeras were like part snake part goat part lion which is a really weird combination hmm. well anyway this one's more this one's more lion lion like um and it attacks Ed, and it um, <clears throat> it first tries to swipe at his leg. Um, oh yeah, Ed, Ed makes a spear, and oh um, wait, yes, the, how could I forget? Mar- yeah, <laughs> Ed makes a spear, and it is immediately destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he the chimera kind of gets his leg with um and you and again in the manga you don't it hasn't been revealed yet that he has a metal arm and leg so you see that it's like oh he's done for like it that's got to be a a bad wound but he he seems fine um and father cornello is shocked and then and then the chimera goes for his tries to bite down on his arm and father cornello's like ha 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 we we got you and, and again um ed is unharmed and in a very cool Ed like way we get this big dramatic scene with him like ripping off his coat and um that reveals his his metal arm and his leg and we get a really good look um at his scars for the first yeah. time um which I really like and you had something to say about that i think yeah he well watching it he's got scars going all around you know the part his injury like the the stump of where his right arm used to be he's got scars obviously from the transmutation where the the skin was you know ripped from him but he also has scars from the surgery they're they're obviously old stitch marks um going from the rivets that hold his auto mail to his bones like the the metal is fused to his bone at this point. Uh, I also have to pause to make another manga note. So when uh, Ed and Al confront Father Cornello, initially in the manga, they're alone. So after the confrontation with Brother Cray, they go to see Cornello alone. Cornello reveals his plot and Ed, you know, makes the, uh, Ed makes the threat 
of telling everybody that he's a fraud. And Cornello, you know, he's like, oh, who's going to believe you? You're outsiders. No one will. Um, And Ed says, oh, yeah, you're right. Followers would never listen to a word I say. But what about her words? And Al takes off the breastplate of his armor. And Rose has been hiding inside of him this whole time listening. So she finds out he was a fraud. And she's just crying and saying, you can't bring my darling back again. And Cornello, being the snake that he is, he admits to being a fraud in terms of being God's emissary, but he promises to resurrect her fiance because he has the philosopher's stone. And this is the point in the manga where Rose makes her decision. And it's not like in the anime where she has to choose to join father Cornello and hold a gun. In this one, she just walks towards him, making her choice to follow him. Anything. If it means getting her, her fiance back and, Ed is warning her that there's no going back, but she says, this is, she says, this is the only choice that I can make. And that's when father Cornello releases the chimera using a lever that says open sesame on it. Um, and awesome. yeah, there's a lot of little quips and jokes that the author included. It's really cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed reading the manga and also I guess that that's a good time to bring up. Like this is kind of the first the first episode where we really see like the kind of light hearted the more light hearted side of the show. I mean like the yeah. first the first um few episodes we you know the first two episodes like there's like you know some short jokes and but for the most part like the first episode we're just kind of getting to know the characters and the second episode it's like a really like serious like Mm -hmm. you know kind of heartbreaking episode um but this one you know we got we got the short jokes and then we have like the funny the the like funny way the the characters are animated um and I don't know I just I even though like it's kind of a still a heavy episode I do in, enjoy it, and it made me laugh more than than, yeah, than the first yeah. two. Even um, though it's even though it's kind of committing a taboo itself, because you know the things you're not supposed to bring up in in conversation are politics and religion, and <laughs> the show kind of does that right away. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they don't don't um, hold their punches. I guess. Yeah, neither um, does Ed. No, he does not. Um anyway, also, kind of back. Yeah. yeah, I also wanted to mention another scene in the manga that I wish was animated, but when the chimera first um slashes Ed's spear to bits and rips his pants and like, you know, you think that his leg is injured um in the panel, he's kind of in shadow so you can't see if there's blood or anything, but Ed's gripping his leg and going, "Oh no." Father Canelo is gloating how do you like the taste of claws that can cut through iron? And Rose is just, you know, in shock and worried for Ed. And the next panel is Ed turning around going, psych. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wish they would have animated that because <sighs> it's amazing. And he puts up his leg and you finally see the metal. And he says, sorry, these are custom made. And all that was going through my head was that line, that mega mind line, my like, custom baby seal leather boots. <laughs> Oh, I'm shaking in my custom baby seal leather boots. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you. So perfect. Oh, he's got honestly, Ed kind of has, in some ways, has mega mind energy. Oh, totally. Um, he would listen to, uh, what was the song? Welcome to the Jungle. He would listen to that while, while beating up bad guys. Yes. Yes. There's, there's a lot of songs. Okay. There's a lot of songs that he listened to from there because I think there's also like Back in Black. Mm-hmm. and um i think highway to hell is also oh, a yeah. movie. <laughs> so they're like all it's ed songs. <laughs> we should make an ed playlist uh we should okay listeners stay tuned <laughs> uh okay wow that was um sorry about the tangent <laughs> yes and, that, and we literally like a tangent in the middle of the scene because like Right after Ed like rips off his um his jacket, 
uh, Father Cornello starts to put together like, oh, your brother's in a suit of armor and you have metal um, uh, prosthetics, metal prosthetics. And he's like, oh, you committed the ultimate taboo, um, human transmutation. And we kind of get another flashback of what we've already seen. Um, and basically Rose is like horrified about what they tried to do and Ed's like well this is what happens when you try to play God and he asks Rose is this is this what you want Ed and Al well they they ask for the the philosopher's stone and Father Cornello responds by making a uh here it says turns his cane into a gatling gun um and he tries to shoot shoot all of them down including rose so Mm -hmm. i mean we already know he's a bad guy um but he's a bad guy anyway (laughs) uh just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy (laughs) (laughs) like my accent it was actually pretty good Uh, (laughs) um uh, and ed creates an exit to escape this um this layer and this is followed by um a very funny scene which is one of megan's favorites so i'll let her discuss yes so as Ed and Alan Rose are escaping, running through the hallways, of course, Father Cornello's men are there and they're trying to stop him. And they're very cocky and like, hey, little runt, you're going to take us on empty handed. Ed, continuing to run down the hall, smiles very giddily like a child in a candy store, claps his hands together and creates a very long knife out of his auto mail arm. And he has the expression of pure evil on his face as he does so. <laughs> that that is definitely like probably my favorite Ed expression is his <laughs> evil his evil Ed. <laughs> he does it so well. Yes, yes. Um and then it basically they cut all the enemies down and in, in a very I don't know. To me, whenever they make those, like, I don't know, they kind of look like ghosts to me. Like, they're all like... Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. The, the enemies, <laughs> the animation gets yeah. very loose and they're, they're kind of yeah. like having their hands up. Their faces are in like the um, the ghoul scream and they're, they're very shaky and wiggly. Yes. So it does look like ghosts. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they escape. And then um, we see uh, Rose and Al together. Al is doing something with the, he's drawing a transmutation circle and um, he took the, the bell from the tower and um, I don't know. They're talking. A little heart to oh. heart. Oh, okay. Here's what he says. Um, yeah, it's really cute. Um, basically, I mean, he's telling Rose about what happened. Um, and he shows he shows Rose his um, his where Ed bonded his soul to the armor. And he said, uh, referring to Ed, his leg had been taken. He was bleeding. I can't imagine the pain he was in. But through all that, he still gave up his right arm to transmute my soul and bonded me to this suit of armor. And Al was so sweet because he's just like, no, I just want to help him get his body back to the way it was. Um, they're both like, they're both so selfless, selfless when they, whenever they like talk about yeah um like getting their bodies back because yeah. Ed's always like we're gonna get I'm gonna get your body back brother and then Al's like I'm gonna get your body back brother it's just like you so think, sweet yeah um, you would think Al is in the worst situation because he's just got his soul but Al insists that Automel is hard on the body so they need to get Ed's first which I 
it's kind of more apparent in the previous anime in the original the 2003 because they do overemphasize ed's pain with the auto mail like how it uh kind of shorts out on him and how replacing it is very painful to connect the nerves and stuff he screams a lot when they're reconnected it's very it, it makes you see just um how much he's had to go through i i am still of the opinion that no 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 help al first because ed there there are people mm-hmm. who survive with auto mail who are just like regular people in the world and not alchemists so Ed could probably deal with it for a little longer than Al just being in a suit of armor. But obviously both of them want to get their bodies back for good reason. And it would life would just be so much easier if they could get them. Uh, so while Al is doing, you know, talking to Rose, Ed is in Father Cornello's office and Father Cornelis comes in and is like, what are you doing? And he basically like admits to his whole evil plot. Um, and Ed's like, wow, you're so dumb. And <laughs> shows, um, reveals that um, he and Al have been broad- broadcasting um, what Father Cornelis has been saying to the, to the entire city. And a fight ensues between Ed and Father Cornello and Ed like just he's so awesome he's I don't know, I'm always so impressed when he's fighting because like he's very like he just jumps around like that and and like moves so quickly and that like his automail is heavy yeah. um but anyway he he very easily beats Father Cornello Father Cornello is not uh, any any match with him and he's kind of, he's kind of a big baby because he's like don't, don't 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 kill me like spare me blah, blah, blah. um <laughs> i'm defenseless <laughs> ah it's so annoying uh. okay <laughs> uh ed's like why well, i don't care about you like i just want the stone and the stone falls out of the ring um and it and just like the yes. one in episode one, it kind of loses its color and disintegrates. And, and yeah. it's like, what? It's a fake. And like came all this way, like such a waste. And he basically um like leaves. Yeah. So brief, brief side note here. Um, well, you can tell the Philosopher's Stone is a fake because it's supposed to be perfect material, as Ed said. So um if you use all of its power obviously it's not real because you've you've used it all up it's it's not the all all powerful alchemic uh miracle that you think and with father cornello he tried to use it too many times so he's trying to create another gun and it rebounds and ends up melding his hand with the metal so he's got like this painful looking uh it's it's disgusting actually um but and this is where the manga and the anime deviate. So in the anime, Father Cornello pushes forward with his plan anyway, uses the stone and makes himself bigger. I, I compare him to a Titan from Attack on Titan, even mm-hmm. though I haven't watched it. And He's not a Titan. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the giant Father Cornello goes after Ed and a, a bigger fight, you know, ensues. The, the animation for the fight scenes in the show are incredible. So I'm not going to be too mad about it deviating from the source material. But in the manga, um, the rebound happens and Father Cornello is basically beaten right there. He does not turn into Titan Cornello. And um, what happens is that the stone breaks and Ed is just kind of devastated that it's a fake. That they had to go this far only to find out that they didn't get what they wanted. Um, And as he's distracted, being, you know, sad and gloomy... Father Cornello sneaks up behind him thinking that he can, I don't know, shank him with the, the corrugated metal on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> As he's sorry. Breaking... sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's like shank I worded him. that weird. <laughs> 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 but as, as Father Cornello is creeping closer to him, Ed, without even turning around, he's just so ticked off that he attacks it's not even provoked hardly but 
the same as in the anime, he uses one of the statues of Leto and has the fist come out and slam the ground next to Cornello. It looks like he's going to kill him, but Ed would never do that. He just kind of slams the fist right in front of him and makes Father Cornello so scared that he'll never try to mess with them again. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would say we don't know if Ed would never do that yet, (laughs) but we know he would never do that. We know that he would never do that. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, and to kind of wrap up the story, we, uh, Ed and Alan Rose are talking. Ed and Alan are kind of getting ready to leave. And Rose is like, What am I supposed to do? Like, my life is over. My fiance is like, not going to come back from the dead and blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> grow up, Rose. Stop being hard. Come on. <laughs> Your fiance so died. Like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Um, <laughs> Sorry, Rose. We don't mean it. Yeah, you can totally tell that I've had, been in many relationships, and I <laughs> really care <laughs> about. Well, I try anyway. to relate her experience to if I lost a family member. Like, I yeah, I'm not in yeah. a relationship. I've never been in a serious relationship, but I try to equate it to like, what if I had lost a sibling or one of my parents yeah and I think she says that she doesn't have any parents right she's alone she she's yeah so she doesn't have any family to speak of so like I totally get like her her fiance was all she had and then she lost him and then like there was this hope like oh he we can bring him back yeah so they're they're talking like what am I gonna do and it's like well I can't help you um and he has this awesome quote um he's like I can't you basically I can't tell you what to do you have to figure it out stand up and walk keep moving forward you've got two good legs so get up and use them you're strong enough to make your own path just my saunter away <laughs> dude my trap walk away uh, you know um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man oh do you are you you shouldn't watch New Girl, but you also should. <laughs> I've seen a couple episodes. There, there's like this thing that they call like a uh, uh, goosebumps walk away, where basically oh. like you say something amazing and then like walk away. Um, and <laughs> but while you're ahead, yeah. Um, and uh, that's uh the last scene we kind of we again see those two kind of creepy characters um they're confronting father cornello and this time we learn their names uh lust and gluttony they're uh they're basically like you failed and gluttony's like oh can i can i eat him and lust is like no and um she has like the her fingernails like turn into like these long spikes and they kill yeah. father pierce his head and kill him yes i um, think it's actually her gloves that extend i was looking at the design of them and it looks like her mm-hmm. finger it could just be her nails because her fingers stay the same length oh oh and it kind of also is interesting because it focuses on this like little mark on her chest and then also when um gluttony goes to eat father cornell even though lust told him no um <laughs> we see the same mark on his tongue yeah um I and then have... the episode ends yes and what, what were you gonna say sorry i was just gonna say i have a theory about why the marks are placed certain places on each of the sins mm, yes i okay that we'll have to talk about that because I agree because yes. like her chest his tongue so we're at the end of the um episode um I just I guess I had a few things besides our three main things um first like what were your overall thoughts on Rose yeah um I didn't think she was a bad character. It's just that she fell under the category of damsel in distress who has a good heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't know. I say overall I liked her, but I felt sad for her because 
she was clearly lost and um this I mean, I would say Ledoism was a cult. This cult preyed on her um, on her state of mind. And yeah. yeah. It's just kind of sad. But I would say I liked her. She seemed she seemed sweet. And um in 2003 did her dirty. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, you can talk about that later, but totally. I hated that so much. Um, I still liked her, but like, yeah. oh, I just felt so sad. Okay. Anyway. Um, also, we have not mentioned, but we have decided to track a few things throughout the show. Um, we might add more later. So um, one thing So first thing that we are tracking is um, how many times Ed like destroys his gloves. Yep. Uh, I think he does it once in this episode. Uh, He at least destroys the right glove. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And for that, uh, I will need to go back. And I don't remember if he does it in the first two episodes. I don't Uh, believe so. I think he takes them off before doing any alchemy. Maybe. But from here on out, we can definitely tally it. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then also decided to track how many doors are made with alchemy. Um, So (laughs) this episode, yeah, this episode, we got one. um, There was another one, I think, in the first episode. Maybe. I don't remember. I can't remember now. I think there was a door. Hmm. We need to go back. Um, and then the the third thing is um, how many spears are made. Uh, one. So there was there was one Two. in this episode, and I also want to keep track of how many seconds it is till they're destroyed. So. I need to go. I'll have to watch um, watch it, but. Actually, I know that there was there's been three so far because there was one yeah. in episode one, one in episode two, and one yep. in episode and two. each time it's been Ed that's made it. Yep. Um yeah, so we'll have to yeah, this one it honestly was probably like one second. Yeah. And then it was destroyed. <laughs> Poor Ed. Um, it takes a while to make this. Which which is a theme. Yeah, and honestly, for him, I feel like it's just for show, like you mm-hmm. like see him like pull it out and like there's like this little like weird thing at the top which they could like look at dragon coil that I, i'm pretty yeah. sure there's a dragon coiled at the top yeah um he's just always he's always over the top and i love it gets it from his teacher um yeah so we're gonna keep track of those and every once in a while we will uh update you on where we're at yeah. so i'm just gonna briefly say two things that you guys should check out if you're listening uh, the first thing is um, there's a channel called Film Theory run by Matt Pat, um, Matthew Patrick, and he has a couple of full metal videos. I think just two of them. But in one of them, he goes through the theory Ed had of the uh, composition of the human body, you know, like water, 35 liters, et cetera, et cetera. And he goes through if that would actually work, if that's actually composition of a human. And the second thing you should check out is a website called superherojacked.com. You can find workout plans for superheroes, anime characters, etc. They have an Edward Elric plan. And this kid, he's he's scrawny, but he's he's strong. He's he's got muscle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So favorite line of the episode. Um, we both have the same one. You nope. can go ahead. I already right. read it once, but Stand up and walk. Keep moving forward. You've got two good legs, so get up and use them. You're strong enough to make your own path. Yes. Love that. It's, um, I don't know. It's just inspirational. You know, you just read it and you're like, yes. And he doesn't even have two legs. (laughs) I like having both my legs. I like having both my legs. (laughs) We got to share that one. Yes, for sure. Um, so 
And then uh, what did we learn in this episode? Yeah. So we learned to not believe everything that you hear or that you see. There are false prophets in this world and you have to be careful about who you believe. That's not to say that you can't have faith and that you can't find things to put your hope in, but you have to be discerning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's kind of interesting because Ed is, I don't know, Ed kind of basically says, I only believe what I hear. I mean, what I can see with my eyes and yeah. And here kind of only trusts himself in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So who pushed the story forward this episode? Father Cornello and Rose. Yeah. Um, Probably for two different reasons. <laughs> yes, yes. Father Father Cornello, he had the Philosopher's Stone. And, um, you know, that's kind of the main focus of the episode. They're trying to get the stone. And then you realize, oh, it's a fake at the end. And it's like, where do we go next? Um, and... Oh, yes. And Rose, she was kind of that push that Ed needed to challenge himself and also to encourage her. So I feel like he learned a lot from her and she learned a lot from him. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the end of the episode. Uh, kind All right. Of, I think longer than last time, but I hope that um, you guys enjoyed. And um, if you have any questions or want to just um connect with us you can follow us on instagram at full metal beyond the gate or also send us an email um at full metal beyond the gate at gmail.com yep and i will be putting these podcasts hopefully on youtube and we might have extra playlists for extra content and fun things so you can check out our youtube channel of the same name as everything else yes all right uh we'll see bye. you next time thanks yeah, for we'll listening see you next time. <laughs> bye